All right, another review. Again, this was sent in by uh, Jensen Tung, and uh, it's a real long, real long box, so that'll be interesting. Um, I already, I've already taken it out. It is a antenna. It is just one long antenna. So what frequency? Well, this is for the 900 meter band. Um, now, 900 megahertz is being used for various things. Uh, it is uh, part of the licensed bands for ham radio people. And it is part of the LoRa band in Northern California, Northern America. Uh, and I think it goes from, well, they call it, they call it nine, usually nine fifteen megahertz, but it goes from like, I don't remember now, like 905 to 928, something like that. Um, so uh, this is a, a, a coaxial monopole or coaxial vertical, I should say. So it has, it has multiple sections that are resonating and it's, it's a coaxial phased array and it has some gain associated with it. I uh, don't remember what, uh, what numbers they put on it, um, but it uh, has an end connector on the bottom. So that, that's nice, so you can use, because if you're at 900 megahertz, then coax loss is, is a big deal. So you wanna, you wanna be using really, really expensive coax. Otherwise, you can be throwing away your dB. If this has five dB of gain, and you put on some bad coax, you might have 10 dB of loss in your coax, so it won't do you much good. All right, so let's take a look in the box. Um, it comes with a, uh, let me get the box out. It, let's just get the box out of the way. <laughs> That'll be better. That'll be better. Okay, so we, it get, you come with the, with the antenna and it comes with some mounting hardware. So there's a, a thing here that uh, you'll clamp the antenna to it, then you have this nice big flat thing. You can apply that maybe directly to the side of your building. It also comes with some uh, clamps here, so you can clamp it onto a, uh, clamp it onto a, uh, some type of post. Uh, this looks, all, looks like pretty good quality stuff. Um, I, was really sh I was really surprised to see this in the package though. It comes with a lightning arrester. They call it a surge protector. Um, yeah, that's really, really interesting. And it's end, end connector to end connector. So, um, yeah, that's, that's, that's pretty amazing. It says DC to three gigahertz, 50 ohms, 230 volts. So it starts conducting, I guess, at 230 volts and, uh, bleeds any charge off, protect your radio. Um, and I'm assuming it's, it's rated for antenna strikes. I don't know. There's an antenna, uh, uh, earth ground you put here and there's probably a, a spark gap or, a, or something in there that allows it to, uh, capture those events. But today what we're going to do is we're going to measure the antenna. Uh, we will see what type of, uh, return loss we get out of it. I'm not going to measure the gain cause I don't have the right equipment to be able to do that. Um, and, uh, maybe we'll open it up and see how it's constructed inside. I've seen some pictures online that sort of lead you to believe that this may be a, um, oh, what are they called? You can build, you can build antennas like this by, um, well, we'll, 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 we'll handle that later. Let's go ahead and measure it now. Okay, so I'm going to be uh, testing this with an 8713 vector network analyzer. And uh, the antenna is going to be over here. We're going to calibrate at the end of the test cable. I have a high precision uh, N, uh, uh, a Pomona uh, brand uh, N, N to N cable. And I don't have any N, N uh, standards, so we will use an adapter and we will calibrate to uh, SMA. And it says connect the short. Let's see here. Let's abort the cal. I'm going to be calibrating between uh, 850 megahertz and 950 megahertz. And uh, I'm going to be using uh, 801 points across that. So that'll give us a really good resolution. Uh, we will go to cal. And we'll do a one port calibration. It says to put in an open, which we will do. Put in a short. And put in a load.
Okay, we now have good calibration. It's uh, very good there on the chart. Uh, let's go ahead and uh, put the antenna online, which is over here. And I have it set up to be measuring um, return loss. And we are getting a dip here and here. So it's definitely dual band. <laughs> if you wanted to use it over here, we'll have to see what, uh, what uh, frequency that is here, here, marker. Uh, this dip is happening around 112 megahertz. So maybe even a little shorter. There's 113. Let's put it right at 115, which is maybe the use case. 115 is, is, is there, so it's pretty close to the dip. Let's go look at this dip over here, see what it is just for fun. Uh, 860, I don't know what that's useful for, but this is really what we care about here. All right, so what we really care about is about 900. Uh, let's go ahead and change units because people don't like return loss units, I know. So let's change it to SWR. And we can see that our um, marker here, our dip is happening around uh, 913 and we're dipping at about a, a SWR of 1.1, 1.07. Uh, let's go here to 100, 800, 900, 900 and I'm guessing here, 906, something like that. So anyway, it doesn't really matter. At 906, it is a SWR of 1.2, very nice. And if we go to the higher end, we have 120, 925, we're having an SWR of 1.5. Uh, so certainly even at 128, we've got an SWR of 1.58. So yeah, it seems to be working working pretty good as intended. Uh, let's go ahead and set the frequency. Let's put the start to, I remember, I'm remembering this wrong. I should have looked it up first. Let's see, 100 and, oops, uh, 906 megahertz. Up start of 906 megahertz and a stop of 928 megahertz. And there you go. So this is a uh, 1. Uh, 1. 1.2, 1. 1.13, and it goes up to about 1.3. Oops, uh, marker. And it goes to about uh, 1, 1. 1.3, 1 to 1. 1.3. So that's pretty good. Let me check the camera here, see if you're seeing, seeing any of this. Yeah, I think you saw most of that. Um, so I think it has very good VSWR over the intended, intended range. Uh, so no, no issues there. Let's, uh, let's take a look at the constructionist thing and maybe open it up. All right, I should have pushed another button. People love Smith charts, I do. <laughs> so this is what it looks like in Visor. Uh, this is what it looks like in Log Mag. Uh, it's about uh, minus 20 over here and minus 25 over here. And then if we turn on the Smith chart, uh, we'll get a little loop-de-doo right at the center there. So yeah, it looks, uh, it looks very nice. It looks like it was uh, designed exactly for what it's, what it's to be used for. And uh, let's go ahead and uh, it's about 60 ohms, 60 ohms over there. Where's my marker? 60 ohms over there. Uh, and about 47 ohms over there, and 746 ohms over there. Yes, so it's right around, right around 50 ohms, good deal. And if people were curious how I was uh, mounting this thing, I have it, uh, I ha have it actually suspended. I have it on a thin string and it's suspended away from anything. So it's kind of in free space as much as I can in the garage here. It's in free space, just, just hanging there, okay? All right, so, I think it's just some RTV here. Um, and if we can kind of remove that RTV, maybe we can, maybe we can sort of get into it. 
dull my knife here. So it's certainly sealed from water. Um, yeah, let me go. Let me go try to use some big tools on it and uh, see if I can't get this thing to open up. All right. So I was able to get the uh, PVC pipe out of there. Um, once I cut that, I could just wiggle it out. I put it on the big vise so I could have some leverage. But um, yeah, here's the uh, here's this piece. So I'm looking down, which I know probably you can't. Oh, you can see it. Way down, and there's nothing in there. There's no loading coil or anything like that. It's just a, it's just this copper pipe that comes up, and then it goes into this first section here, which looks like it's a matching stub. All right, there seems to be a center here, and it looks like there's a, a soldered-on stub here. So there's a little bit of funny, funny, funniness going on here. And then it goes into a, um, a very classic design. I've, I've made these when I was a kid. I made, I made a, J, um, uh, a two meter antenna that was a bunch of coax. You take, you take one piece of coax and cut it, another piece of coax and cut it, and then you uh, solder it all, all together such that the center conductor of one goes to the outer conductor of the other. So, so you can see here, center goes to this outer and this center goes to this outer. Um, and then you have these sections, right? So we can measure some of these and start, try to do some math on it. Um, but there's a, a, a short section here, and then a longer section, a longer section. So these two sections match. And then we have kind of a shorter section at the top, but it's longer than that bottom section. And then it crooks over a little bit here. That's probably just for tuning. They, they probably just figure out Instead of snipping it off, they bend it over just to m make sure that it doesn't rattle around in there. Anyway, uh, yeah, uh, it's not as fancy as some of the antennas that I've seen online, um, but this one makes a lot more sense. I've, I've seen the math behind this one, and, and, uh, and it's just, you know, these are probably quarter wave sections or half wave sections. I guess they'd have to be half wave sections. I don't remember now. Um, but we can certainly, we can certainly measure them. Let's see, how long is this section here? All right, so the center section here is about 900 and, I mean, uh, 110 millimeters. If we have 100, uh, I mean, 915 megahertz, and the speed of light is about 3 million meters per second, if we just divide that by 3, we have about, um, 305 millimeters for one wavelength. A half wavelength is 152, and we have 110. So if we divide 110 and we take one over that, uh, velocity factor of 72% of this stuff, eh, it's kind of in the ballpark. So these are kind of like half wavelength sections and uh, You'd have to put this in in a calculator and stuff. Figure out what the right uh, what the right lengths and stuff are. But these are you know kind of about half wavelength, I guess. But anyway, uh, a lot more interesting inside than I thought. And there's some there's definitely some dimples on things. So it looks as though there's tuning done by crushing pieces. Looks like somebody reached in here and crushed crushed it here and crushed it here, crushed it here. Um, it, it seems like that wouldn't happen once it's put in the in the actual PVC pipe. So this is probably fine tuning. <laughs> I hit it with a hammer. Uh, yeah, and uh, so antennas don't have to be pretty to work, and this one is definitely not pretty to work. But it, but it does work. I mean, we saw it on the VNA. It uh, it actually it actually looks very nice, and from the outside the construction looks great. Um, so. Everything looks pretty high quality. So yeah, I think I'm gonna put the, uh, put the piece of plastic back on it and uh, keep it in my arsenal. Yeah, I like it.